Hey y'all, welcome back. So last week I shared four of our all time family favorite Thanksgiving recipes. You guys loved it, so I thought this week, why not try three new recipes? It's always fun to throw a new one in the mix, right? So that's what we're gonna be doing today. I hope you guys will join me. And we're gonna be starting off first with stuffing sausage balls. All right, so to a large bowl, we're gonna take one pound of breakfast sausage. I'm using the hot kind because that's all my store had that wasn't frozen. But you can use hot, the regular, any kind that you want. And then next to the bowl, we're gonna add one whole prepared package of stovetop stuffing mix. I'm using the chicken flavor just because that's what I like. And basically the stuffing mix is taking the place of Bisquick, which is in, you know, your normal sausage balls. I think this is gonna be so good though. And then next we're gonna add about three cups of cheese. I went ahead and shredded up some fresh Colby Jack cheese and cheddar. So I'm gonna do about a cup and a half of both. We're just gonna get this combined really well. And you can use whatever to mix it. I find the best tools to use are your hands, but just for the sake of it looking prettier, I'm gonna use this spoon. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna go ahead and start rolling these out into about one inch thick sausage balls. And you can bake these in the oven, but I found the better way to do them is in the air fryer. It creates a crispy crust on the outside and they're so tender and delicious on the inside. I'm gonna get these rolled out and we'll take them to the air fryer. So to do my sausage balls in the air fryer, I like to cook mine at about 360. It's gonna preheat for just a minute, but that way the temperature is kind of low. We want that middle to be done before the outside is, you know, burnt. So I like to do my temperature a little bit lower, but they're only gonna take about 10 minutes. And of course, I do have a good bit of sausage balls, so this will probably take maybe two batches, maybe two and a half. But they cook so quickly, it's super easy just to get them all done. I have to tell you guys, I loved how these turned out. That outside, like I said, got super crispy and the inside was even more fluffy than your typical sausage ball. They were so good. And then I thought, who doesn't love a little bit of cranberry sauce with their dressing or stuffing? So I added a little bit of that for a sauce on the side. The first thing we're gonna do is blanch some fresh green beans. I have some over here that I already cleaned up and trimmed. And so we're gonna get these into this boiling water that I salted and just let these cook a few minutes. Probably five or six minutes is all we need because we really wanna keep that bright green color. And while our green beans are cooking, I'm gonna take just a regular fancy, fancy bowl right here, make an ice bath for it so when these come out, We'll go straight into the ice bath so they'll keep that nice green color. All right, my green beans are done. Just gonna turn the heat off. I have my ice bath over here. I'm just gonna transfer them over. Y'all, I thought I was filming and my camera was not recording. So to my large skillet here, all I've added is a half a stick of butter and then about a half a cup of slivered almonds. And I am just letting my butter melt and I'm gonna let these almonds toast. They do not take long at all. Once you start to smell them, you're ready to add your green beans and your garlic. Also gonna add a little sprinkle of salt and a little sprinkle of pepper. All right, my almonds are almost ready. So at this point, I'm gonna add a good bit of minced garlic. Stir that around a little bit. And now I'm gonna bring my green beans back over. smells so good already. We're gonna let this cook just for a couple minutes until these green beans heat back up. We're pretty much done. Cannot get any quicker or easier than that. So 
All right, they are done. So I'm gonna get them over, transferred to our serving dish. Hopefully I don't drop them in the floor. I think these will be the perfect addition for something fresh and crisp in the middle of all those Thanksgiving dishes. So first of all, I just have four sweet potatoes. I tried to get some relatively in the same size and these are going into the oven at 375 for about an hour, maybe a little longer until they are fork tender. All right, so our baked sweet potatoes have baked, they're soft. I'm just letting those cool a little bit so I can work with them without burning myself. So now to a bowl, I'm just adding about four tablespoons of butter and then about four ounces of cream cheese. And I'm just gonna kind of melt mine a little bit in the microwave. The recipe says to have it room temperature, but we just don't have time for that. So I'm just gonna pop it in the microwave just a few seconds. Next to the bowl, we're adding about four tablespoons of brown sugar, a half a teaspoon of cinnamon, one fourth teaspoon of ground nutmeg, one fourth teaspoon of ground ginger. The recipe calls for just a little bit of salt and then some freshly ground pepper, just a little bit. Add a little spice in there. Now I'm just gonna bring over my sweet potatoes I'm gonna use this same bowl just to keep from having so many dishes. Y'all know how I am. And I'm gonna try to gently scoop all the filling out of my sweet potatoes and into the bowl. I'm trying to be careful not to tear up my skin too much because obviously we're gonna put the filling back in here. So I'm just scooping out as much as I can without tearing them up too much. Basically, these are gonna be like little individual sweet potato pies in potato form. I'm tearing them all up. Y'all, this ain't working good. <laughs> this ain't working good, y'all. Maybe I should have oiled the skins so they wouldn't dry out so much, but I still think they're gonna be good. We're still gonna keep going. Maybe this one will be the one. Maybe this one will be the one I'll put in the front to take the picture. Okay, that one did pretty good. All right, now it's time just to get this filling mixed up. All right, now just like the name says, we're gonna get these back into the skins and back into the oven. Y'all, these things are not cute. I think they're gonna be good. Well, it's looking a little bit better. It's looking better. Get in there. We are gonna make you work. We are gonna make it work, honey. Look at that, they're looking pretty good. I was doubting myself. You should never doubt yourself. These really are making me think like individual sweet potato pies. So, of course, I'm thinking you could definitely top these however you want. We're gonna get these back into the oven, still at 375 for about 15 minutes, but I think even at the end, especially for kiddos, to top with some marshmallows. All right, I got kind of scared there for a minute, but I think they're looking pretty good. These are going back into the oven. All right, our sweet potatoes have baked again. I can tell you they smell delicious. So for mine, I'm just gonna top right in the dish with a little bit of chopped pecans. And of course, like I said, you could do marshmallows. I think it'd be really fun if you were doing these for a get together to have them in a dish similar to this with them lined up, kind of alternate with chopped pecans and then marshmallows, pecans and then marshmallows. And that way everybody could just kind of choose which one they wanted. But look how good they look. I can't wait to eat one. This is gonna be my lunch. I'm so excited. All right, y'all, that's gonna be it for today's video. Thank you so much for joining me. Let me know if you're gonna try anything new this Thanksgiving. Maybe one of these three caught your eye. I hope y'all are doing amazing, and I'll see you real soon in my next video. Bye, y'all.